Good evening, ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties. This is Alex, coming at you from the underworld, and welcome back to another episode of... Y'all, it is hot as hell outside, and thank God the full moon is over, because if not, I would still have fur all over me, and I'd be sweating my ass off. But now, as long as I just avoid Carrie from oh, Moon... Oh, you Oh, God, you're making your ass clap by itself. Stop, stop, oh, God. <laughs> well, thanks to Carrie's ass, I now have to sweat my ass off for the rest of this video. But you know what? It is what it is. Anywho, I want to go on and get down to this weekend's book review, which last weekend I read and reviewed The Howling by Gary Brandner, which I enjoyed that book so much I decided to progress in the series to The Howling Part 2, which is also known as Return of the Howling. But if you have seen the movie, which is, of course, The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf, but have not read the book... I just want to let you know that the book and movie have nothing in common with each other whatsoever, except they're both about werewolves. And truth be it, even though the movie is as crappy as what it is, I actually did enjoy the movie because it just seemed like it was campy fun. But as far as the book is concerned, it feels like it's a little bit more serious than what the movie was, and I feel like it does tie up some loose ends, even though it's not the strongest volume of the series. But without me rambling any further, let's go in and get down to what made Gorehounds wag their tails off two years after the first book was released. The Howling Part 2 by Gary Brandner picks up three years after Chris and Karen had burnt down Drago, which, since the two of them don't stay together, the story ends up following Karen's life path, where it shows she's remarried to a guy named David and she's gained a stepson by the name of Joey, which early on it establishes that they live a happy suburban family life. However, about 900 miles away, Roy and Marcia have shacked up in a trailer, and Marcia is hellbent on exacting her revenge against Karen, because in the book's predecessor, Karen had disfigured her. So, from this point, the book becomes a cat-and-mouse game that eventually turns into a full-fledged horror story. Now, it's up to Karen to do whatever it takes to protect herself and her family from the werewolves. Since most horror fans wonder why the book sequel to The Howling and the movie have nothing in common, here is the reason why in regards to those differences. Although The Howling 2 was published in 1979, the movie adaptation wouldn't receive a release until 1985, and while Gary Brandner was one of the writers for the movie, here's where everything went wrong. In an interview by Christian Sellers in 2010, Brandner said originally his script for the movie adaptation of The Howling 2 was fairly close to the actual book. However, after writing the film adaptation, one of the producer's friends wanted to be in the movie. So for this reason, it had to be rewritten. Then, after a rewrite had been completed, the friend dropped out. Next, Brandner was told since Spaniards were funding the film, they wanted it to take place in Spain. So after another rewrite, the Spaniards dropped out. And the movie was then relocated to Yugoslavia, where another rewrite was expected. Yet due to having a publishing deadline, Brandner dropped out of the movie where another writer was hired and produced the final product. After this experience, Brandner refused to be involved with any future Howling movies. Fun facts! Here's a little bit more information about Gary Brandner. In an interview conducted by the Elden Zone website, Brandner explained he did not think The Howling would be a success due to his agent repeatedly telling him that horror did not sell. Also, Brandner noted his reasoning for writing horror is because his mainstream work was not selling, and also short stories were just not lucrative. 
and since he couldn't take historical romance seriously, he resorted to a genre that he enjoyed. Now that we have all of that covered, it's time to move on to the spoilers section of this video, which if you've never read this book before, I'm going to reveal some things that could ruin the experience for you. So if you wish to skip this section, just scroll down to the comments and you'll see that I have a pinned comment. With that, there is going to be a timestamp inside of that comment, so all you have to do is just click that timestamp and it will redirect you to the thoughts section of this video. Now you only have 17 seconds to do this, so ready, set, go! Since everyone has had the opportunity to click away, I want to talk about a few of my favorite moments in this book. Now, the first scene that comes to mind is subtle, but at the same time, it's effective. And prior to this, we see where the characters by the name of Roy and Marcia have been stalking Karen pretty hardcore. However, Karen's stepson Joey doesn't realize what's going on because he's only a kid. And this actually adds a greater degree of dread to the moment I'm about to discuss. So what happens here is Joey comes home from school and is talking to the housekeeper by the name of Miss Jensen, and he explains to her that last night when he went to bed, he looked out his bedroom window and saw someone in a scary mask looking back in at him. And before Miss Jensen can freak out, he excuses the situation as being his friend Kelly, who was starting a prank war. And truth be it, had I been this kid, I would have been freaking the hell out. Like, I would have pissed all over myself and hid in my natural habitat, which at that age was the closet. But anywho, pretty much what really stands out to me with this scene is how the characters really lower their guard and they think that it's only a prank. They don't realize how in danger they are because of what's going on. And so because of this, it just really makes me feel like the scene is showing their vulnerability and also telling me that things are about to get worse, which truth be it, they do. So moving on to my second favorite scene, which is the home invasion scene. So what happens here is you have where Karen and David have gone off on a date and Miss Jensen and Joey are left at home. Well, as the night progresses, Miss Jensen hears like this scratching sound outside. So she goes to open the door, assuming that it's her sister's dog. And when she opens the door, a werewolf runs in, rips her throat out, and it does also have the intent to kill Joey. Now, this scene really made my adrenaline pump because I honestly thought Brandner was going to kill off Joey since he was a secondary character. And even if he did that, I imagine it would have been quick because he really doesn't dwell on gore. But the werewolf ends up running away because there's so much of a ruckus going on that it's afraid neighbors are going to start to close in and it's just going to cause more of a problem. So that scene was really just pulse pounding for me. But my overall favorite scene in this book is at the end. And what happens here is Karen ends up going to this cabin that belonged to this psychic gypsy lady. And she's actually been lured there this time by Marcia. And when Karen arrives, she sees the gypsy is dead and Marcia has been waiting on her, which Marcia strangles her until she goes unconscious. Well, when Karen wakes up, she discovers that Marcia has like these long handled pliers that have been sitting in a fireplace. And Marcia explains that she's going to exact her revenge by stripping Karen of her flesh bit by bit while she remains alive. And even though this doesn't happen, it's the idea of like how long this could last and what all would be going down if it were to play out. And what's so creepy about this idea is like back in the day when people were suspected of being witches or werewolves, this was one of the torture techniques that was done to them.
Well, 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 book two and Roy is still an asshole. Surprise, surprise. And truth be it, this time he's more so of an asshole because Marcia has him pussy whipped. And even though I would like to elaborate on this, I really feel like my time would be better spent bitching about Audrey. Now, before I drag Audrey through the mud, I do want to play devil's advocate for just a moment because if I was in her shoes, I would have had some of the same emotions going on, but I wouldn't have gone as far as what she did. Now, here's what happens. You have where Audrey and Chris are on vacation and Karen shows up. And because of this, Chris directs all of his attention to Karen because they gotta go fight werewolves. Well, this ends up putting Audrey on the back burner and she's left in the dark about why Karen is there and she doesn't get involved with what they're doing. And truth be it, with Chris, he does not need to let her get involved because it could put her in harm's way. And even if he did tell her the truth, she probably would not believe him. However, this is where Audrey's true colors shine through, and let me tell you, they are the colors of shit, because what happens here, Marcia goes up to Audrey and explains, well, you know, if you help me out, I can get Karen removed from your life. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that Marcia is talking about killing the bitch, but Audrey goes along with it anyway. And even though I might do some spiteful stuff, no, I am not going to stoop to that level of ending another person's life just because of some dick. I mean, you got to consider karma. Overall, I really enjoyed The Howling Part 2, but I didn't like it as much as I did its predecessor, which I think the reasons why is because at times it felt like it was predictable and it also felt like it was rushed, but then we also had Karen's character that started to feel like a trope. Also, I was still disappointed that the werewolves in this did not feel like actual werewolves. They just kind of felt like people who turned into literal wolves. So the creature feature aspect of this is still not in this book. Now, as far as messages are concerned, I noticed that the book focused on the topic of revenge, as well as how toxic people can manipulate their lovers, and we also see where it's focused on PTSD, which the first book comments on PTSD, but with the sequel, it really gives us a lot more understanding for what a person goes through when they suffer from this. And since I'm a person who has PTSD, how Karen felt like she had to look over her shoulder until all loose ends were tied up was something I could really relate to. Now, as far as a metaphor is concerned, I really didn't see anything metaphoric with this novel. However, it could be because the topic of revenge was so strong, I couldn't see the forest for the trees. And as far as the characters are concerned, they were still likable and believable, but also their time on the stage was over, so it was time for them to go. And at the end of the day, I did not feel like this book scared me or creeped me out, but it was still a good thriller, so it kept me on the edge of my seat. Although The Howling Part 2 is a thin book, it took me the matter of a week to read this because I simply could not put it down. And a lot of what goes on with this is very thrilling, but at the same time, it's interesting to see how the loose ends get tied up and also what's happened to everyone after the tragedy at Drago. So if you have read the first book and you have yet to try this one out, I do highly recommend it because it is a really good wrap up. On to the questions. My first question is, what is a horror book you would recommend about revenge? Load up the comments. My second question is, since in the first video I said the werewolf was my spirit animal, what's your spirit animal and why? Well, personally, since we know that werewolves don't exist, I would have to say mine is the wolf, and the reason why is because a wolf seems loyal to its pack, but also at the same time, if it's a lone wolf, it can totally take care of itself, and also they're majestic and scary as hell all at the same time. So, I can't wait to see what yours is, but as far as mine is concerned, the wolf. But with that said, it's time to go in and close out the video, so I would like to say thank you to Lisa G, Joseph Baylot, and Melody Romeo, which Melody Romeo is an author who writes fantasy fiction and also historic fantasy, so if you would like to check out her books, be sure to go on any online platform because they're available in ebook and print, so be sure to check her out.
And if you're wondering why I'm giving a shout out to these wonderful people, it's because they've been generous enough to contribute to my Patreon account. And if you would like to contribute as well, I have two different tiers available, which one tier is $5 a month. And for that fee, I'll give you a shout out at the end of each of my videos. And the second tier is $10 a month, which I'll still give you that shout out. But once a month, I'll also send you over one free photo, and I do creepy photography on the side, so the photo I send you will be some of my own work, and once you receive it, you can print it out, do whatever you want, it's yours. But if you can do that, that's awesome. If not, no sweat. I just hope you return to this channel and we continue to have a fun time. Also, if you would like to hit me up on social media, links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok are all available in the description section of this video. And if you have yet to subscribe and hit the notifications bell to this channel, be sure to do so because I have tons of more great book reviews coming in the near future. So until we see each other again, I hope you have a wonderful week and sweet nightmares.